God. Anyway, we're starting this now. Hopefully you guys will learn something from Professor Emperor. And I'll just keep talking here, because of course I can. Oh, that's true. Also, that, uh, for those that don't know, that starting scene, that it's one of the most famous art pieces in 40k lore. It's, uh, the death of Sanguinius. Who, uh... Yeah, he died to his brother Horus in combat, and then the Emperor was really pissed. Oh man, that sounds heretical. I mean... Yeah, I mean, Sanguinius is my favorite Primarch, because... People seem to misconstrue that he was just perfect when he tried to be altruistic to the point of helping everyone but himself, which gave him an underlying anger and bitterness. Because when you never focus on yourself, bad parts grow. And now Magnus has a didgeridoo. A didgeridoo? Interesting. Yes. Not a really. didgeridoo. I'm just making sure. I think Magnus's voice actor is Australian, but I don't know. <laughs> and the demons are talking. Are talking Aussie. I don't know why. <laughs> and we please have a little bit of trust at this point. I mean, of all the places in this expansive galaxy, this isn't the most comfortable location for me to be Funny in. enough, I think this was actually the first episode of the show when I first found it uh, that I watched. Besides but it's been a long time since I watched it. Oh dear god, don't remind me of Fulgrim and what he became. Dear god, no. Looking at food, a luxurious atmosphere, and an actual bed are less comfortable than the realm that is literally a collective seizure. Eh, if you had more- That's more or less what the realms of chaos are. They're a collective seizure mental capacity than a box of grox manure Noted. maybe you too would appreciate its own unique majesty this is it doesn't not to want to nevertheless the warp is being here insane of trust in my lord is it not yeah, perhaps crazy damn skeleton damn skeleton i don't know why, why he's using a didgeridoo here? to mess with the oh, warp okay tell me what are you actually doing don't mistake my question for curiosity, I'm mostly just concerned. Research, observation, experimentation, calming my nerves, yeah. listening to the whispers of the warp, passing the time of day, and so on. He's just Albeit doing things. It's pretty damn hard to get a good focus in this place, with father around, finding any warp traffic to spy on, which isn't tinted gold and full of pent-up frustration, is like trying mm. to remove a demonic incursion from your rectum. I didn't need that image. I do not need it. No! For those that don't know, Medica is also a lewd tuber. I didn't mean that work. I, I meant the classified oh. government work stuff. Oh, that stuff. Sorry. Stop yeah, they don't seem to be great, so I just kind of pop to the bathroom for 30 minutes. Huh. For ignorance, your shiny no one's brave enough to head is burning through my retina <laughs> like an acid made of stupid ah! Seriously though, have you still not got that this heresy expression you speak of is just your Imperium's excuse to put a giant bolt into the head of anyone who goes against you? Honestly, some of it is and some of it isn't, because dealing with chaos isn't great. I hate Slanesh and Nurgle so much. Siege at least is just a schemer and tries to get all the people that search for knowledge or have abilities. Corrin will just stab you in the face. Or make you stab people in the face. To be honest, I know I get and understand why you hate Slanesh. Nurgle, not so much. Because Nurgle is gross as hell. I don't want to <laughs> deal with that. Have you seen what the walking pox is? Yes. Uh, pox. Uh, walk. It's, uh, Medica, the best way to describe the walking pox is think a zombie, but you're fully aware of what's growing on and you can't move your body. Is that it? Uh, also, you're basically a zombie who's now rushing towards anyone near you to kill. And your face is now twisted zombie. and a grim. And also, you have horns growing out of your head and you're now green. Is that it? But yeah, you have no control of your body and can only watch as you're like some festering boils or something. I mean, that I is what happened, and you're in constant pain. Control of my body, so I, think I, I, don't, I don't think the difference is here. <laughs> You can still feel all the pain as people trying to kill you because you're basically a walking zombie and you can't do okay, anything. 
this is still better than what the Dark Eldar do. I mean, yeah, but they're the Dark Eldar. <laughs> Everything is better than what they do. Like a child and a my dad is better than your dad argument that received the right to kill anyone. Also, because to... most of them uh, uh, is like a child and a my dad. I can't is believe how got that right. Dad argument that received the right to kill anyone that attempts to argue back. You witness still doties. I can't believe he said that. Hmm. He <laughs> called him a Jill Doties. Make everything so I never I remember know, him saying that. Gotcha. creepy, and straight up evil. Maybe it wouldn't be such easy targets for both propaganda and a bolt shell to the forehead. I mean, you're not doing yourselves any favors by wearing the skin of your enemies, for example. Funny enough, this is something Cole called, called uh, Thaddeus Bile out on, where he said, like, I'm doing what I can to save humanity. And he's like, yeah, sure. The guy who's wearing a coat of human skin is trying to save humanity. <laughs> For your information, I have never worn the skin of my enemies. Do I look like a Necron Flare to you? Oh yeah, do you guys know what a Necron Flare is? I assume they flay things. Kind of. See, when the Necrons took out the Catan, they killed one of them, which Catans have an aspect to them, a concept if you will. And the one they killed was basically the God of Flaying which unleashed a terrible curse upon them. So every once in a while, you know those mechanical skeleton people that I talked about that just want to kill all living things? Yes. They, they feel emotion for the first time in their lives, and they feel hunger, even though they can't eat. Give me your fucking skin! Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. They go crazy. I'm they go. done with the neck bronze. They can't even eat. What the, what the heck? Oh, yeah, because that's what Platy loves to do. I love eating so much. Most people love eating. Most people will, would, you know, rather... Will, will, would die if they were forced to stop eating. That's yeah. how much they love it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Anyway, but yeah, the Necrons will literally wear the skin of their enemies and literally just... some. Apparently, the Necron Flares appear from a, some sort of meat dimension. We're not really sure, but it's a curse upon Necrons mm -hmm. that are around them. And they're metallic fingers grow into claws they basically go insane and their faces start to grow teeth well sharp metal teeth from their faces but you know how do robots grow i don't know well they have a living metal they're made out of living metal which is yes we've already set thing. the cease and desist order they're just being ferocious plastic dicks about it <laughs> they also have a nice egyptian theme which the thousand sons also have Yeah, the cease and desist. Gaze upon it. Regardless, you still look like you woke up on the wrong side of the Eye of Terror. I do see where you're coming from. All the decapitated heads and giant spikes do make it look like we're compensating for one thing or another. Like I could be some parents. But to be fair, given your Imperium's alarming obsession with... There, there is one way you should describe most of the things that go on with 40k. is usually daddy issues. That's how some people describe that it. That's my understanding of 40k. No, Goals, I'd more say or less. Some issues of your own. Nevertheless, did you only come here to watch over my shoulder, or did you have some other reason? Well, I actually wanted to ask you something. Well, go ahead. I break the monotony. I've been wondering. I served my emperor for somewhere around 11,000 years or so. I don't really keep track of them. And yeah, that's trash for our custodies. Our father. I don't actually know all that much about him besides what I've seen with my own eyes. Isn't that enough? Of course it is. After fighting this side and hearing his dreams from humanity, no sane man could not appreciate his majesty, wisdom, and might. Indirectly calling me insane man. Truly, he is the one and only worthy leader of mankind. But where did he come from? Did he have parents, or did he just, I don't know, crawl out of a gold deposit? <laughs> and then not that's a bad guy, of course. I'm sure it was the most glorious deposit in the world, man. <laughs> oh, hungering for some crisp, luscious knowledge, are we? How fascinating. I thought you companions were especially trained to act as completely uninteresting impersonal automatons. Well, they do kind of act like that sometimes. 
but uh, they're the strongest warriors in the Imperium, and every time they go into battle, the Administrom just chalks it up as a victory before the battle even starts. Hmm. Truth be told, I think as time has gone by, most of us have either gone a bit into the cuckoo's nest. This is like a true, true warrior. Oh my god. Yeah, but... Uh, oh, you're junk and waving at him! What? Warrior! What? A warrior! No. But, I yeah... I saw you do a bridge. I did. God damn it. But how'd you know, not know about the legend of Junk Warrior? Okay. <laughs> I think we broke him. You did. Should I switch to Evil Me? I feel like I should switch to Evil Me, but his model isn't ready yet. That's you. You can put a, uh... You can put a, well, an under construction sign up and just start doing the voice. Under construction, you say? To shred, you say. Well, <laughs> but yeah, the <laughs> custodians usually are quite good warriors. They're, uh, well, they've, they rarely ever die is the whole thing. And they're kind of bored, so they might have gotten a little stir-crazy because all they do is protect the Imperial Palace. Which, while it's like several miles long, it's still boring as hell for them. Yep. Which they have established a, uh, a small group that apparently leaves the palace to guard certain individuals. Why? It is unknown. It's just that apparently each individual that they guard is destined to do something amazing. What that is, is completely up in the air, but it, it's a thing. They literally leave, and like I'm gonna follow this random civilian. So imagine, like a seven, like a seven foot tall, golden armored man looking at you, just staring at you. Your ever waking moment. <laughs> it is as weird as it sounds. Pretty it much. It is weird as it sounds, but they are literally your new bodyguard for Pretty the rest much. of until you fulfill your destiny. <laughs> Why? I don't know. It's a thing. Uh, I think it's because they get, like, mental psychic images from the Emperor every once in a while, and they have to interpret them themselves. Right. Probably that's it. The underlying section, everyone has completely lost their mind. Hey, Kitty! Want to go and take a swim in the Promethean pool with us? No. Hey, be that way! As I was saying, I still follow the Emperor right to the Eye of Terror if he commands it. I live for him. I follow his every word, and I never defy him. And I would happily give my life for him. But, well, there's a thing. I happily give my life for him. Implying that you can actually be happy. Mm. Which also implies the fact that you have thoughts and feelings of your own. Which subsequently implies you aren't an incredibly stale person whose personal interest can be summed in the words standing around. I guess that's pretty much. The reason why I was elected to the position of Captain General. After millennia of isolation and your occasional burden. Yes, he is the leader of the Custodians, the Captain the General of the Custodian Guard. And I suppose that's also part of the reason why you're still wearing your armor after all this time. Yeah! Fun fact, Henry Cavill actually has an army of Custodians because he does play the 40k war game. Hmm? Yeah, Henry Cavill plays 40k. Who's Henry Cavill? The guy who played Superman for a while. The guy whose legs don't work? No, the guy who recently played Superman for a while. <laughs> From the Snyder stuff. I didn't watch the Snyder stuff. I hear Zack Snyder, I just kind of instinctively turn away. He also played The Witcher in The Witcher Show. Isn't Witcher a career path? Anyway. <laughs> I'm just gonna Ooh. go and die over in this corner now, you know. I'll just go over Back here. Chat. I don't blame you, Mac. I really don't blame you. <laughs> How am I still alive? I have no idea. Uh, well, not all this time. Oh? I'll, I'll try and ease well. up on you. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I mean, I Are you genuinely feel remorse? No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I mess with Fable every once in a while when I do my very sad voice. Oh, I remember when I was happy. Oh, wait, I forgot. whole place is covered in gold. <laughs> wait a minute, wasn't Henry Cavill uh, from Goodbye Mr. Chips? How did he become Superman? I don't know. He's also apparently a very nice person. 
animals. Anyway, Not blow. as you were asking. Ah, uh, yes. The subject. Okay, I know he's been around pretty much as long oh, as... Oh, yeah, he talked about how he went through a phase and talked about kinds of floss that I don't want to talk about. Why does all of that, but... Did he make good news in that Jersey simply the guardian of our species? And if he made us, what made him? And if he didn't make us, what made us? Ah, uh, the oldest question in human history. Uh, what are our origins? Fucking for the most part. Sadly, I'm a little <laughs> help to you in that field. I think he was too big to do that. And superhero comics. Really? Didn't the Emperor tell you himself? And if he didn't, don't you have some old archaic book about it or something? Actually, he never told me much about his own past or humanity's origins. Perhaps he didn't want us to know, since he's always been so exasperatingly introvert about things like teaching. That, or it's because I never really asked. May have been the latter, all things considered. And no, I don't have an old book lying about that specifically tells us where we all came from. Only my neurotic brother Lorgar would have the talent to write a Oh dear god, I don't need to know about Lorgar. We don't need to talk We don't need to talk about Lorgar. Besides, even if I had a book like that, all the exciting demon to- What about his brother, Lesgar? Pushing you down a flight of stairs. <laughs> no amount of stairs can stop me. Pushes him up a flight of stairs. <laughs> or just rolls face. a giant rock down the flight of stairs with plenty the beware in signs like it. would probably just make it look severely unappealing in comparison. <sighs> I'll, I'll just put Platy in a Sisyphus situation. That'll make me better, feel better. Oh, no. I expected this much. And I've looked through all the tomes and slates in the palace's libraries, all the data storage and archives, ancient texts and journals. I've even looked through albums of travel photos of Terra's sake. Albums of travel photos. If you are that curious, why not just ask Father himself? Yeah, I don't know. Multiple reasons. His mind is so splinted that remembering such ancient knowledge might make him fling his skull across the room like Oh a yeah, the Centurion's here for some reason. I don't know why he is. That and I'm much unsure if he'd actually want to tell me. I mean, if he never told you, why would he tell me? Well, he yeah. does seem to like you, despite I like how he says like. incarnate. He relies on you to listen to his boundless complaints and to inform him about, to quote, stupid shit. I'd even say I he mean, trusts you. He certainly trusts you more than he trusts me or any of his other sons for that matter. I mean, Actually, that are you sense. sure you're not his wife or something? No, of course not, but... What? Wait, really? You think so? Indeed, stepmother. First oh all, my god. Why? Second of all, I think you might be right. I'm really wrong. So I might just go and <laughs> ask you then. You do that. Actually... He's gonna die. Do? Nah, I'm gonna play Maybe. that talent show that I heard is coming up next Thursday. Oh yeah, talent you say show. You they're batshit insane, but your fellow companions oh, do seem to know how to have a good time. Uh, uh, unless you want soggy hair and stay down for a week, I would highly recommend you drop that. Why should I? Oh. I don't know what he means by talent show, and I don't want to know. So let me get this straight. You mean to say that you really have no records of human history? before the Age of Strife accessible within the Imperial Palace? No, not really. Most of it is so heavily censored by the Ecclesiarchy and the... There are a bunch of ages, uh, in Earth's time, and there is the a the Rebellion of the Man of Iron, which is what you think it is. Robots attacking and then humans defeating them. Yeah, and that's why they don't really have those anymore. Yeah, that's why they refuse... They just hollowed out skulls instead, because this fucking setting... Yeah. They seem to have a wide abundance of skulls. Also, they use it because, uh, they... Well, they have a wide abundance of all kinds of body parts. They also <laughs> they also do this just so, uh, because they're more resistant to chaos than just normal machines. No matter what the... Uh, tooth. No matter what... Why is Windows 95 a week on the Pokemon type chart to chaos? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, so you have no the codes lit. Thanks to them censoring everything, the the history books look more like barcodes. Recollection of the tales of the old ones, my own conception, the rebellion of the men of iron, or any other tidbits of humanity actually kicking ass. A servitor skull. But yeah, the main reason they have things that are controlled by human or controlled by human body parts or what it's left. 
is because they're more resistant to the taint of chaos. I honestly unlike thought normal I hit machines. a greasy fucking bottom of this like shithole when you chaos told me tame? the Inquisition's activities, but <sighs> I'm just now realizing We're not talking about Slanesh. that I'm only scratching the surface of this frozen <laughs> ocean of ineptitude. It's almost as if nobody wants to hear about how our people weren't the be-all and all of civilization in this aspect I mean... of a galaxy. <laughs> um, yeah, funny that, isn't it? Right. This is yeah. something that I shall now unfuck post haste. Magnus, fetch some parchment One and do fuck. what you do best. Take notes. Pretty much. Don't worry, I always have paper with me. What a fucking nerd you are. <laughs> anyway, I want you to write down everything I am about to tell you. And when I'm done, rewrite the whole damn thing as a grand historical document. Then I want you to start covering it in holy seals and shit. And then throw it into a pile of dirt for a while so it gets that shitty old paper look. That'll oh. make stupid people think it's inherently trustworthy. Oh, and shiny britches? Yes, my lord? When Magnus finishes his chicken scratchings, <laughs> I then want you to take this document to the scribes, have it proof okay. to make sure he doesn't sneak in any mimetic chaos bullshit, then have it mass produced and distributed all across the galaxy to all people of authority. I don't care uh. if you literally need to ram it down their fucking throats, just make sure I mean, they read it sense, and honestly. understand it. No spam box However, filter shall stop my glorious wisdom this time. Yes, my lord. Now, gather hmm. around, children, for gather this around, grand children. story time. Cue visuals. In the beginning, there was nothing. The nothing is nothing that has ever not yeah. existed. The nothing just Funny enough, we don't know what's outside our galaxy in 40k. Such thing as existence uh, or we know the Tyranids are coming from there. There yes, we do. Some bits of heat oh, multiple Tyranids <laughs> from multiple directions. Actually, there is a little bit of knowledge about the outside of the universe, but it's not actually useful. It's just more just the fact that GW refuses to do it, and they're just like, "Listen, don't worry about it." Pretty much. Because every time there's there's every Eventually, time there's been however, information about the outside universe, it's been the, level, nothing got sick of doing uh, nothing it's been Tyranids or or so or um, freaking Xenos that'll kill you. Smaller than the That's level it. Of progress made. I mean, there Since are some I'm really scary Xenos out there, like those ones that can control house. time. The Rondon genocide. Then, no, 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 not those ones. The ones that uh, attacked an Iron Warrior's base and literally were reversing and forwarding time so much that they're aging people to dust. And turning people into goo. Exploded with the force of something that you'd compare giant fucking Get tanged, explosions idiot. to. Pretty much. There has never been, and never will be, an explosion as big as this one. It was so big that it's literally still happening right now. Wait, what caused the heat to compress and explode like that? I don't oh. fucking know. Dark matter. Plain walkers? Oh my god. Precursors, a bunch of geeks with nothing better to do making a badass fictional universe for the purpose of inevitable. We all get those references. He's selling inordinately expensive plastic Lately. miniatures. It precursors, Jack and Baxter, Plane Walkers is so after the Magic the Gathering. Hit, I mean, precursors could also be Halo. Of energy that yeah, that's what I said. And, these atoms oh and to be frank, it's... It, I guarantee if I look deeper, I can find at least three more stories that will that use Started precursors for the uh, ancient civilization. And Probably. Into elements, molecules, and compounds. These substances, unlike energy, had mass and decided to get closer to each other because now this new thing called gravity applied to them because that's just what fucking happened. Fuck this boring comic shit. Let's get to the good stuff. As matter. I do like that he's using lumps, just popsicle these lumps sticks. Became celestial formations. Stars, planets, nebulas, yep. asteroids, comets. Eventually, due to conservation of energy and some weird chemical reactions, <laughs> life eventually formed on these lumps of space crap. Supposedly, the first life that came about was a race of beings that became known as the Old Ones. Giant Toad The reason man. for this nickname is that they were the ultimate rulers of reality and evolution, and they were really fucking old, go figure. I These don't know why they're toad men. Neglectful grandparents of all that is life. Why they not? So it, damn hard that they the eventually that Lord became spiritual Croak entities. Croak looks to... like one. Yeah, I know Lord Croak, leader of the lizard men, looks like them. Discovering the so-called realm of souls. Never talk as bad about Lord note, Croak. As you can see, they looked something like big fat amphibians before they evolved into beings of pure power. So that's a lot of progress <laughs> for a bunch of giant hyper-intelligent toadmen. 
Come to think of it, that sounds all like hail the toad. The administration. All Angel glory to one joke is everyone story. refers to uh, Lord Crocus Hypno Toad. So we say, All hail Hypno Toad. Toadman, you rose to a typewriter with a fucking mouth. <laughs> anyway, they then decided to create other species for shits and giggles. Some said that they created all life after themselves, but I'm not so sure on that one. Perhaps they helped push the boat out, but they certainly didn't fucking build it. So these old I'm ones didn't I can't build create boats. humanity. That's what I just said, you hollow-headed ninny. Most life evolved in one way or another, and anyone who doesn't accept that is probably really, really, really drunk. Lorgar's <laughs> going to have fun with this. Lorgar's not around. <laughs> Continuing on. Next to arrive were a bunch of floozy Stop fucking milksops that you would recognize as the Eldar. Oh, Due yeah. to the fact that, early in their evolution, they reproduced like space rabbits, they yeah. actually ended up becoming the dominant race in the galaxy. The old ones were more like spread out singularities of imbalanced min max hanging around here and there. <laughs> Just like but they neither circ. race really cared for each other, so they coexisted peacefully, one spreading like a pointy eared plague, while the other pooped out orangutans, more frogmen, and races with unpronounceable names. <laughs> but then came the next Oh, uh, yeah. Here we go. That sounds familiar. Strap yourselves to something, because here comes the most obvious plot twist of the fucking century. The Necrontier were salty assholes, because they had evolved on a shitty, radiation-blasted planet. They built underground cities that seriously looked like depressing tombs, because yeah. their life sucks so much that they would rather wait out their own death Pretty than much. do much else. After years of being subservient I just to their like how he's just rotating. Like an entire race of entitled <laughs> middle-aged people. They became envious of both. Yeah, they got angry when the old ones wouldn't give them their secrets of immortality. Both the old ones' incredible powers and the Eldar's massive galaxy spanning group. Of course, they were little more than an irritating bunch of self pitying tear jerkers to such powerful races. Eventually, however, the spite of the Necron tier became so mighty that they started hating all life in the galaxy, even Pretty much. themselves, and decided to start murdering literally everything. However, they soon realized that manually making sure every single grass straw on a planet was dead was really fucking tedious, so they started snooping around for something to make into a super weapon. That led to them finding- Uh, do you remember the thing you told me about that one Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, character? That he was literally a galaxy? Oh, that was the entire species. Now, yeah, you're a super radioactive star that has yeah, turned their planet into the empire of atomic bombs. You ever watch Go they Rush? It's it. a drug trip. I don't want to. Right <laughs> now, it's so fun. Right now, Fable's watching Arc 5 because he likes Yuya. Why? He's a, he's the type of character I like. He's silly, he's dumb, he's not. He's not really the best duelist or best protagonist, but I think he's pretty... He goes into Berserker Rages and tries to maim people. Eh, so does Jaden in <laughs> freaking Season 3 and 4. I, I don't see so it. So does right Neck now, Wolf. But... No, I don't. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say he tried to maim me. Oh my god. <laughs> then you notice that the gas was feeding on the very energy of the star. But yeah. It turned out that the gas was alive, but not This is- it feeds on the life force of a star. The same sense as other life forms. All hail the glow cloud. A different way, I do like that they drew this little silly face on ones. it. <laughs> of course. Yeah, they're older than the old ones All even. All they actually did was eat radiation and, you know, be what is basically celestial fart gas. But of course, these assy neck rondards just hit a fuck with this peaceful, sun-eating anomaly. They proceeded to collect as many of these weird sentient gas clouds as they could find and forge yeah. bodies of living metal for them, because what isn't that the first idea that comes to your mind as well? They used the yeah. gas's own radiation-eating abilities to lure the dormant consciousnesses of them into the bodies they had made via the use of a bridge of starlight, or some pretentious shit like that. So after eons of peacefully orbiting stars and eating radiation, these beings which knew no other need than to drift around and consume were suddenly given incredibly powerful physical forms. And this is why I basically said that Yugo character was a Catan, which is another word for star god. And hypercomputerized synthetic brains to give them all the knowledge the Necrotry hearts had collectively acquired. As you can guess, this went swimmingly for everyone involved. Yeah. Wait. 
I think I can guess who these guys are now. Congratulations. Also, when the Catan grows, they kind of... It's basically giving an infant superpowers and having them... Re giving them super knowledge without any of the empathy to think on any of it. Yep. Gas entities. They also, they now man. hunkered for souls. The Give this man a PhD because that's some serious brain power for a giant. Really what? Souls are delicious. You can have platies. I think he sold it for Sorry, I already sold mine. <laughs> <laughs> the armored potato chip. But yes, these beings, in their fancy new bodies, with their big new brains, were named the Catan by the Necrotier and were yeah. worshipped as gods. The Cat 10 weren't nice though. They absorbed all the living metal the Necrontier had amassed and used it to transform this massive species of psychopaths into a race of living, murderous machines yeah. who mindlessly served them. They're basically they robotic also skeletons. Ate most of the Necrontier's souls while they were at it because they were ungrateful assholes like that. <laughs> That's also when these mounds of fluid dickery discovered that souls were far more appealing than space radiation. I guess so uh, have more oh. nutrition or something. Yeah, so pretty the much. Catan started looking back through the extensive memories of the Necrotier, now renamed Necrons for some reason, <laughs> and saw that the old ones had the biggest, tastiest souls of them all, and pretty decided much. that it would be a good idea to eat them. When the Catan came gnawing at the old one's front door, the old ones of course decided to punch the shit out of them with their minds, like all grandparents do. <laughs> I do love that sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> That's when they noticed that their psychic powers were useless against both them and the Necrons because they had no souls of their own. This started a massive galaxy-wide massacre of the Old Ones that went so far that they nearly became extinct. I guess yeah. you could say that the Old Ones got their life towed away from them. Ha 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 I guess the Necrons take up what they wanted in the end. Not quite. See, some of the old ones survived, and they decided that the only way uh. to stop this imminent galactic doom is to fuck up in an equally as awful manner as the Necrontier. Bus, they <laughs> created a new race, one which could find the- Oh no, they built something else. The soulless Necrons for them. A race with strange reality bending powers fueled by crowd yep, mentality yep, instead of souls. <laughs> a race that knew and desired only war and destruction. A race that could weaponize anything and was almost impossible to kill. A race that became known then as the Crocs, or Fun as we know them today, the Orcs. Funny <laughs> enough, Corks were actually a lot smarter than modern day Orcs, apparently, and could have long, yeah. dignified conversations. Cause shortening names is a thing. What? <laughs> there is a plot twist you didn't see coming. The orcs were actually important all along. So yeah, while the crocs were fighting the necrons, the Eldar were shitting their collective frilly patties because they knew <laughs> that they were next on the menu. So they decided to salvage as much of the old one's tech as they could and fuse it with their own. Believe it or not, the webway was actually a creation of the old ones, but the Eldar nicked off with the designs like the thieving bastards they are. That said, by combining webway technology and the power of the Realm of Souls, they created a new type of material to combat the living metal of the Necrons called Wraithbone. It's basically when they stick the souls of dead Eldar into basically machines and use them to fight people. The Wraith constructs were sent into battle alongside the Crocs to fight back the Necrons. Turns out that while the Cat 10 were immune to psychic powers, it seemed as they could and handle being Wraithbone. From the moment I heard the name come up, I knew you'd say that. Why aren't you the smartest kid on the fucking block? Of course I am. No wonder you were bullied by your brothers. No, no, that's <laughs> just not cold for Anyway, just when things started yeah. to go I'm down sorry, the drain that guy for the cat so like things got even more worse for them, as one particular asshole among them known as the Deceit, good friends with the Eldar Laughing God. Oh yeah! Together, the most There's the Eldar Laughing God Kigarak, who's the king, who's the god of jesters, and one of the only surviving Eldar gods. A G Katan, he could and of course, there's a Katan knows the Deceiver, so which... Creatures with names yeah. that only the most lonely of people could come up with, such as the Nightbringer, the Void Dragon, and the Outsider. Funny enough, the Outsider is one of the few Catan that we know is still in one piece, but he ate a bunch of other Catan and might have gone insane, so... Yeah. So you're saying he's more Catan than the other Catans, because he ate the other Catans, and, 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 and so he's it's like, at least twice as much. It's I'm sorry, why are they all named after a fucking board game about trading sheep? I... <laughs> 
Listen, the Nightbringer is supposed to be the aspect of death. The Void Dragon is supposed to be the aspect of oblivion. The Outsider, I don't know. He ate a bunch of other Gatan and that fucked with his concept, so... The Dessa ever then said to his fellow also, Celestial... Also, I do love this design of the Void Dragon, even though he looks nothing yes, like that in reality. Say, all the other Catan are weak and being killed off. We should eat them before they die so their powers won't be wasted. Thus, the Catan started in fighting, and began to eat each other, while also being destroyed by the Corks and the Eldar, because that is clearly what an intelligent life form would do. So much destruction was caused in this, the first Great War, that the Catan suddenly realized they were expending more energy than they were absorbing, and yeah. would run out of power if they kept this up. All according to plan, Shago Rath said as he laughed away the night with the Death Lever. Killing all of your allies in the middle of a giant war was apparently a bad idea. Who would have fucking thought? Plus, they simply decided to retreat back to the oh, yeah. Ten Worlds with their Necron armies to wait for the universe to become planet. Basically, they hid away at these Tomb again. Worlds. And sometimes, planets are just randomly revealed to be Tomb Worlds and get attacked by the Necron sleeping there. It uh, happens more likely than you think. But during that time, the Necrons must have regained some consciousness and taken revenge against the Catan for screwing them over. So I have been led to believe... Well, to be honest, it kind of sounds like the Berserk will happen to them. That's what you get for being a filthy Xeno, after all. <laughs> so with that giant cluster fuck out of the way, you'd think things would get better. But nope. This giant war had left the universe a complete fucking mess. The old yeah. ones were near extinct. The Eldar were still oh, scared no, Platy's shitless, dead. and worst of all, no the Krolls, with no Necrons left oh, yeah. to fight, turned on their creators since the old ones had forgotten to install a fucking arm <laughs> switch. Fortunately, <laughs> they could be held at bay due to having no technology of their own. Yeah, that they said something worse than Necrons was on the horizon. You see, all the souls who were eaten, and all those who died in the battles created a major imbalance in the realm of souls. This imbalance within the outer realm life. corrupted and twisted yes. it. This is the realm of With souls until world, it was twisted into lack of the war. decency that life now collectively experienced. Nightmare There's the materium and the immaterium. from the darkness of the realm like a giant Which is the realm of thoughts. What? You're an immaterium. I mean, I technically am. I'm a materium girl. No. <laughs> yeah. But the, the Immaterium is the land of thought, souls, and dreams. Tactic panic attack. It was at this point that the first demons emerged and the realm of souls no. was given a new name. The warp? That all makes sense. Yep. Basically, Am I if wrong? A, if fuck, oh. I mean, basically think of it like this. If a bunch of people believe that Santa Claus is real, it, then the warp will manifest a Santa Claus. The universe, but it fucked up the outer realms of the universe too. What about snow Compared to that war, this 10,000 year old no, since that he's... started when fucking Horus <laughs> decided to be. I didn't bad... think we were going to talk about Rankin Bass, Rank Bass here, but Boy, it's there's always time to talk about Rankin Bass. I fucking love stop Puts motion. Things into context, doesn't it? Yeah. I. Suddenly... But yeah, the war in heaven is what that was called. And more or less, that happened over a longer period than what's going on right now with all the conflict. And it was insane. Small, and I don't know. Because it was basically like people throwing galaxies at each other. I had a feel about that. You'll get used you're to it. On. Besides, you're shorter than most of your brothers anyhow. That's entirely my choice, and you know it. <laughs> Where were we, the humanity, during all this? We were all busy evolving from primates into tribal cavemen, picking our noses. We were and learning to throw shit at each other. other. Beings do, but Pretty not much. for long. You see. Warp storms caused by this huge war fucked the galaxy over, and additionally, demonic predators of the warp finished off most, if not Yeah, all, that's when demons came ones. to be a thing. It's like some complete ass wipe suddenly invaded an old folks' home, demolished all their belongings, <laughs> and subjected all old people to summary executions. Pretty and much. Another completely unrelated group came along they and did the, the exact the same thing all over again. Good for too long. The Eldar, <laughs> realizing their own incredible fragility, decided fuck it. Literal. This is something that actually happened. After Eldar basically were the masters of the galaxy, they screwed everything over yep. by, you know. They boinked so hard it created a lust god. That ate all their and other gods. Constantly. So much so that they repopulated the galaxy again. 
became the dominant species once more and ruined their own reproductive cycle to the oh point gosh. of near non-functionality. I mean, I know you lose it if you don't use it, but if you use it fucking constantly, it's gonna get worn out and shrivel up. It's at this point that the idiot says what species emerged. The what? I am absolutely hilarious, even after- <laughs> Did you catch that? What? He said the idiot- He said idiot said what? 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 For all these millennia. <laughs> I still don't get it. So, actual humans Defeated. finally started coming yeah. forth out of the evolutionary fuckfest at this point, and a handful of them gain psychic powers similar to that of other species carrying souls around. These yeah. early day psychers called themselves shamans, and they were totally super badass, guiding humanity by learning about yeah. the ways of nature and the universe's history through the power of the realm of souls and probably some shrooms. <laughs> However, when the daughter of demon douches accompanied with an entire gang of horribly unnecessary creatures like enslavers and psychnoia and started to Yeah, the enslavers were a thing. I don't know much about it, but they the came around. started to be horribly killed off in spasmodic manners. So, of course, the shamans decided they needed to put their heads together to solve the problem. So they Literally, right? Again. Literally. Yeah. By combining their very souls, psychic powers, God dang it. and strength <laughs> through ritualistic <laughs> magic. <mass suicide, laughs> History repeats the blink itself. Of something that had taken the old yeah, they put their minds together and put their souls together. To do. They all became a single living being of spiritual energy and power. In short, they created me. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well then. Yes. <laughs> what? There will be one more history lesson about what's going on, and then we're going to get back to what's actually going on. I actually might need to go. No, that's fine. We'll probably end it here anyway. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I'm getting a little burned out. That's fine. That's fine. I might have been up too long. But yeah, I'm glad I didn't have to show you guys the stuff about the little mentors. That'll be something later. For those that don't know, that's my favorite Space Marine chapter, and yeah. Isn't that just called depression? Are the lamenters the ones that will actively kill? Well, that actually need to be corralled so they don't kill themselves fighting, but it'll kill you if you if you keep it from killing themselves too much. No, they're extremely nice guys. Who, uh, unfortunately get fucked over by the galaxy constantly. Oh, those ones! Yes, those ones. Yes. <laughs> hmm. So yes, thank you all so much, and I hope to see you guys later. We're, like I said before, we do this every- Well, I react every Sunday. With usually some different people. Platy shows up every once in a while. We're not sure where he comes from or where he goes. Medica's always free to come by, though I, he's usually busy. I am busy, tired, or busy and tired. Ah, I know that. Feeling. I've been sending or... my consciousness through time and space. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some ice pops right. and then comfort a friend. Oh, Bye. No worries. See ya. Hell yeah.